60 millimeter pipe, one third of that, 20 millimeters. Let's grab a line and we'll take that over to the bands or the uh, chop saw and cut some angles on it, 45 degrees. Got our saw set up at 45. We're gonna sight the blade. We want it to just, want it to just kiss the side of that scribe line. Now we're gonna take and rotate the pipe. 180 degrees. I'm gonna line it up to just kiss the line again. Give you an idea how that looks. Now we'll take it over to the other saw, cut it off at length. And my couplers, I'm making them three and a quarter inches from the longest point to where we'll cut it off. So here's our fresh cut off, no cleanup whatsoever. And here's what's going to be one of the corner posts for the cooling rack. You can see it's not a terrible fit. A little bit of gap and that's totally fine. So let's take this guy, we'll give it full cleanup and just ramp out the edges on both sides just to take basically the thickness of the material down. We're not actually changing the radius. That's a pretty darn good fit. Now that can get welded up wherever I set the height at and then we'll chuck this whole thing into the drill press and run a hole saw straight down the middle of it, buck the hole out. Once I've got the first one built and I've got my spacing set where I want it, which with this one, it'll be welded down on the bottom cooling rail here at a two inch gap, three inches in between, inch and a half. Once the first one's all done, welded up, I'll set all the rest of my parts and pieces on top of it to make a perfect mirror image. <coughs> that way, looking across the back of the truck, everything lines up. When I go to make the front post, I'll do the same thing to line up these two ports that come back here and then I'll figure out how I'm going to do the front across the headache rack. So that should be a perfect match. Now I'll get this one welded up, go get the holes knocked out of it. One to go.
clean, clean, clean. Always clean the material. Now, I am working on the front post here. And give me a quick little thing. Here is one of the rear posts. So we got a two inch section here. Notice, it'll line up. Did that for a reason. So this is a two inch space here and a two and a half here. So across the entire rail on the side of the truck, I will have a half an inch of fall, encouraging any liquid that gets condensed out to get to the back of the truck and get into the rear condensate tank. My bottom rail on my Toyota is laid dead flat and very common when I go to do a rail clean out, there's water trapped in that rail. So I'm just gonna give this a couple percent of fall, try and encourage that condensate to get out of there. See now the back post is really easy. They just have to mirror each other. So there's one, there's two. I've already got the hole popped over there. They just have to sit apart from each other, line up across the bed and line up forward. That's super, super simple. But because I'm building everything super tight in the front of the truck, trying to condense everything of the gas fire into a small space and integrating it into a flatbed, the front rails get a lot more tricky. So you remember I got an end plate right there that bolts on. I can't have my pipe sitting right over top of it because then there would be nowhere for that nut to be hanging out that's welded in place. So I have to kick the post back down the side rail. Also you see, I have to go around my tar drain. So that post is offset back and now I'm going to fit up a couple more pieces right here that kick it down across the front so I can build the center post where all the gas will be coming out of the heat exchanger and actually entering into the cooling rack and dispersing right and left through these three front rails, two side rails, plus the bottom edge of the frame rail before it gets back to the condensate tank, which we haven't built yet. But this little corner is pretty tricky. I'm no pipe fitter, so I'm just kind of guessing, and I got my angle pretty darn close, but also when you're doing a fish mouth like this, trying to line these all up to be identical, and see, I got them pretty close. I think this one's kicked just a tad in, so that means that that angle is no longer correct that, that I cut. So I'm gonna have to face that off with a flat wheel to get these to fit correctly and be completely the same all the way across the front. But I also think having that as a tube corner is gonna look pretty neat, you know, aesthetically pleasing at least. I'm probably taking this way overboard as far as looks go, but I want these corners to all line up with each other and then line up in the same plane so that when I place it on the rail, all these front tubes are in a nice even line and everything looks good as it transfers around the corner. And when I'm doing stuff like this, especially um, you know on the, on the bed frame, I'm going effectively a 90 degree corner, but these aren't simple 45 cuts. These are 30 degree plus an offset. So there's quite a bit of degreeing that comes in right here. But I'm a simple farm boy. I grew up with the most basic of tools. I line this up by eyeball just straight across and then I measure from the bottom of the pipe and make sure they sit in the same position. Once I have it where I think it needs to be, I go ahead and put my magnet on it. And I swear to God, a framer square is so handy when you're doing metal fabrication. You can tell if all your fittings are lined up and everything's square. Um, I already have this one tacked in place. I can take one of my offcuts where it needs to be. And I can square everything up and make sure that I'm going to turn that corner a perfect 90 degrees. And I can do the same thing because I cut all three of my fish mouths exact same length at the exact same radius. All I have to do to make sure that this one is in alignment with the other one is just square up off of the edge. I can look right up it and tell exactly where it needs to be. I can get more particular, of course it's harder in the vise, but throw the square across the top. If this is a true cut, 
and these are all the same length, they're going to line up nuts on on the square every time. Super handy for fabrication. People don't really think about it, it's a carpenter square, but man, they're handy. And what I was talking about earlier by doing the, the fish mouth or the cope out in this manner using the 45 degree cuts and just opening it up. Tell me that's not perfectly weldable. A very inexperienced welder can do that. And especially out here in the corners, you've got this nice little back bevel to fill in. And then your material is thin right here where you thinned it down with the grinder. So you can just go just a little bit high and work your puddle down onto the thicker material and get a real nice clean burn all the way around. Cause I'm free, free flowing, yeah. No obstructions. I'll go in and uh, deburr these little edges here, just a flap wheel on the die grinder, real quick. That'll flow real nice. Now I can get this one put over onto the bed, figure out where it needs to sit front back, and weld the corners on it, clean it up. And that's all four posts. Then we can get them welded on the bed. Well, that's all four corner posts made up. But I didn't mention these are two and three eighths OD pipe, 3 16 wall, uh, just mild steel. Took a lot of cleanup to get them to that point. Um, I've killed a lot of flat bits on this project. Uh, so those are all made up. They are ready to go onto the bed. I don't have the pipe that will connect all of them yet, so waiting for that to hopefully ship from Rock Auto. Then over here I got some 3 inch pipe, just more scrap metal. I'm gonna clean all this up. These are gonna get put together and that will form the center Christmas tree post in the middle. Once I have that built and mounted onto the bed, then I can run my gas outlet over to it on the heat exchanger body. And that's about as far as I can go until I come across a rear condensate tank that'll live over here. So it's coming along. A lot of hours of cleaning steel before I can weld, but that's what happens when you get a free stick of pipe that's pretty crusty and rusty and still has all the mill scale on it. So end up going through a lot of these guys. I've tried out these pads too. These seem to work okay. They leave a really nice smooth, smooth finish. Man, I'm just knocking everything over. They leave a really nice finish that's uh, good enough for painting as you can see on the side rails. Real nice smooth. Looks good. All right, I'm running out of memory, so uh, we'll catch you guys on the next episode. Thanks for watching.